Hi, this is Anthony from West Coast Custom Concrete, the best in the West. Today's video will be on, a, on an Olin 545 concrete pump. Here I am setting it up. The back of that pump, the manifold there, that's a four inches and it reduces down on that reducer to um, three inches and it goes to two and a half. And then I reduce the hose down the way to a two inch line. I run a two inch line most of the time. Um, I get calls, at least 40, 50 calls a month from people around the world about the concrete pump, asking me questions. For me, being a concrete guy, I, I wouldn't do it any other way. It's so vital that um, because of the mixes and the custom stuff I do, my objective is I have to get this on the ground fast because there's not enough time if you use a wheelbarrow or any other way if there's no access. I mean, if you can shoot for it, yeah, that'd be nice, but it's just not a perfect world, and it generally doesn't work like that. And California is tight, and there's a lot of backyard stuff. so. Out here, concrete pumps are essential. This is a guy I went to high school with how, uh, house. He was selling the house, and he wanted me to come out and pump it for him. And uh, I gave him my crew to finish it for him. I had nothing to do with it. I just came out here to pump it for him. I worked with his brother for about 15 years. So I came out here and helped him out and pumped it for him. Here's a two-and-a-half reducer where I reduce it down to a two-inch line from two-and-a-half to two. These are heavy duty clamps. They have Vic, Victrolic Vic clamps with like a groove in it, but I really don't like them because they, they wear out faster. The heavy duty, if you're buying concrete hose, uh, heavy duty ends is probably the way to go. That's what I like anyway. So I'm just winding this out here. But people from all over the United States too call me about this and they say they wheel it or, or Georgia buggy it or something like that. I didn't, I didn't even know what a Georgia buggy was. I had to look it up. I've never seen one before. And uh, if I had to do it that way, I would just probably sit in the georgia buggy and run it off a cliff with me in it i just can't believe people do it that way it's kind of mind-boggling i mean you're not running diamond grooves and stamping and doing stuff correctly the the time and and the factor it takes to get the concrete on the ground with this um these pumps these olins whatever the last two numbers are that's what they're rated for to pump an hour this is a 545 so it's rated to pump four and a half loads per hour and the next pump up is a 565, obviously 65 yards an hour. There's a 585, 85 yards an hour, which if I was still doing big commercials, that's what I ran. Because that'll do like a seven or eight minute load, wide open. This is about a 12, four, 12, 15 minute load. If I was wide open pumping with this pump, which I don't generally pump it wide open because it's going to splash all over the house. I set it to how much hose I have, how much air pressure I have on it, what slump I'm doing. That's generally how fast or what's, what speed I pump at. These guys are laying it out here. Here's some guys Javier brought out with him to finish this for my friend. Um, they're just marking the joints prior to pouring. I'm pumped up. I'm just setting this up here. Just about an hour away from my house. I never drive this far. I had to get up at five, so I'm a little slow right now. So I'm clamping all this up. You want to keep your clamps clean. The uh, real test is when you plug up and you have issues when it's full of concrete and there's concrete all over the ends. You got to clamp it back up. You have to sledge it out. If you plug up, what you do is you look at the air pressure where you sent the nitrogen at. And if it's pinned up 600 pounds or something, you know it's from the reducer where you reduced it down in the reducer or past it. And if it's right where you set the air pressure, it's in the manifold. It's in the back of your pump. And when you unclamp this under pressure, the piston's pinned. So you have to bleed the air off, all the nitrogen off. And then when you pop the clamp, it's going to explode because the piston goes forward. It, it, it doesn't just sit where it's at. It, the piston blows forward and it'll, it'll explode where you're clamping at. So I usually just pick it up and hit it with a shovel and blow the clamp off of it. Here's a nitrogen bottle here. I got about 150 feet out. I'm pumping it semi-wet. So I put about 100 pounds of air on it. And I run about, I don't know, five or seven gallons of water I prime it out with. Here's the truck here. We're gonna back him in. And I get with an Olin pump, you have to put a stick in it to hold the prime. Some people put a bag and just leave the reducer down, but I've been doing it the same exact way since the day I started. So I just I just keep continually do it the way I do it. It works for me. You can do it any way you want. Probably pump this down to five and a half, six. Something like that. But pumps, if you're a concrete guy, I I, I couldn't even dream of of doing it any other way. I don't have all these laborers and wheelbarrow guys because it's just tearing them up and they're only going to do it so long. Then you got to get a younger, newer group. And I can't have my business be uh, ran by if I have wheelbarrow guys or a Georgia buggy or whatever. So 
I would um, suggest people to start getting into pumping if you're a concrete guy or for a service too. Because if I don't have any work or I'm slow, I just pump for other contractors or run my tractors or whatever. We're going to prime this out here. So right when the concrete hits the grate and starts going into my pump, I drop the stick to keep the water up in front of it. So the water runs down the line as I, as I do it perfectly. And then you just shoot the water out ahead of it. We're just pumping this down here. It's like a patio with a walkway around the house and then um, a front porch. It's about one load. And you can do these things. The guys know these guys are so experienced not to kick because a lot of the finishers will kick and they're trawling and splash on the house. But these guys are way too experienced and I'm not going to splash on it either. And occasionally it happens, but I don't put plastic up or nothing. I can do it. As you can see, the house is perfect. I'm probably the best guy in the world at doing this. We're just going to start running this down here. That's probably about a five and a half or six. I can't really, I don't remember. This video, I have about seven or eight videos. I've been kind of disenchanted about putting videos up because it's summer, hanging out with my kids, going to the beach. So I have about seven or eight videos I got to get on and edit. This is like a month, month and a half ago, this video. I just haven't edited it and got to it. I wanted to do a pump video because so many people keep calling me wanting more pump videos. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to have to do one live and show exactly. But I mean, until you plug up and you know how to unplug it and you know how to clamp it up and you're in you know, really hot heat and it's going off in the chute and you can go through that. Um, you don't have experience at it. It's going to take you a while to learn how to do it. But I haven't never plugged up on any of my videos because I'd like to show what you have to do and how to find the plug and how to get it out. So one day when I plug up on a video, when I'm pumping, I'll do a video of it, of how to get it out, how to find it. I'll show the nitrogen bottle where the pressure's at, how to bleed it off and then unclamp it. And you'll see the explosion where it pops. You just can't get rattled or nervous because I, 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 when I started, I've unclamped it under pressure before, and it is an absolute grenade. I forgot to take the, you know, I'm running around like a chicken with my head cut off trying to figure it out, find the clamp, and I just found it unclamped, and I didn't bleed the pressure off, and it's, it's quite dangerous. Most of the time, you'll plug on the prime out or the washout. The washout is pretty tricky because you're incorporating water, and it can separate the mix and sand pack you up or rocks you know when the mix becomes separated the rock goes ahead of the sand or, or whatever and if i'm sitting pumping for a long time and, the, and i'm pumping for a company when i used to pumping at other contractors jobs and they're taking a long time or whatever and the in the hopper's full and there's mud in the chute and it's hot i'll run the pump all the way down because it'll separate because if you put your hand on the pump it's like a vibrator it's vibrating and it'll vibrate the sand down to the bottom because it's the heaviest substance of the, of the of the of the rock the water and the sand the, the sand will go to the bottom and you'll pack up so i'll run it all the way down to the bottom of my hopper and shake his shoe down and i'll just sit there and then i'll tell the driver put more mud into my pump here i am washing it out here just put the hook on it um i'm not sure how they wash out in other places but this is just a washout hook you just clamp your hose to it It has a heavy duty end on the on the hook and you just throw it up in your pump oh excuse me up in the hopper of the of the mixer and use a strap and just tie it down because that thing will fly out of the back if it plugs in that hook and you could kill somebody with it there's a slump i use that's about a five and a half so when you're washing out you run the hopper all the way down but not where you can see daylight because if water goes in there it'll separate in the manifold so i pump it all the way down then you fill it up with water just pump it down and just keep continually turning the volume up faster and faster and faster they have it wide open so you're shooting it through there and just blowing everything through and once you run three hoppers out it's like about 90 gallons i say i run through it three of them and uh, everything's just spotless clean there's no nothing in the hoses none of that it's impossible so i don't know some people use sponges or put them in there i've just never done it i've never had a problem so i just fill it up and shoot it through but it's such a lucrative business it's such a it's such a good business and the pumps are there's so such low overhead on it as far as failure and braking it's a very simple machine for the job it does, I mean, in the, in the amount of, of mud and what it can do, it's, it's unbelievable, but it's a fair, fairly simple machine. It's just, uh, um, I'll show at the end of the video, the uh, components to it. I'm just winding the system up here. This took me about 35 minutes with the washout. So I pumped the load and washed my pump out in about 35 minutes. So about 10 minutes to um, 15 minutes to wash it out. So the, the mud's already on the ground. They're both floating it. They're going to go kick back. That's the 
asset of having a pump. The stuff's on the ground. I'm not going to plug up. I'm going to pump it fast, efficient, clean. I mean, it's it's so vital out here that nobody would do it without it. It's just backwards thinking. And if you're going to have a whole career in 20 years of doing it, 30 years of doing it, it's just, you know, at some point you have to make the move. That's my truck and the um, whole my whole setup, how I put it. I carry about 300 feet of hose, but I have about another 700 to 1,000 feet of hose at my yard because I had so many pumps at one time. I sold a couple of them. And when you sell a pump or you buy it, they should have 200 feet. It should come with 200 feet, the whole system, the reducers, the clamps, the hooks, everything comes with it. When I sell it, I give 200 feet. I might be selling this pump soon, and I want to. I might get a little bigger pump. I don't know yet. There's a nitrogen bottle. That's where I sit there. I sat at about 100 pounds, and I had about 150 feet of hose out. So what that does is the piston in the back shoves water. There's the coolant for the radiator, the fan. It shoves water, air into the line as you're pumping, so the line doesn't surge, so it doesn't tear the forms up. That's a Deutsch turbo diesel. There's the panel there. This has a jog switch where you can manually move the cylinders. There's the pressure of the machine. If it's pressuring out, you can hear it and you know you're going to plug up. There's a volume control. That's an oil gear. Hydraulic pump. That's how you either speed it up or slow down your speed. That's a setup. There's two rams, two pistons, a turbo a four cylinder, hydraulic pump, and, and, a, and a nitrogen bottle. That's how simple this machine is. And for the rate of failure, is there's not much that can go wrong on it. You just change a couple of parts every 200 hours. The poly packs. Here's the hopper here. The balls and seats. There's an intake and discharge balls that go up and down as you're pumping. They're all if they're all scuffed up, you need that's when you need to change them. There's my setup there. That's why I'm the best in the West. <laughs>